All right, you're welcome back to Queen's Wednesday on YM The Morning Special. Thanks to Okuda Kayesu and Kalami Val for always starting on Wednesdays on a laughing note right there. So if you happen in, to interact with a video that you think should make it uh, uh, breaking views, send it to us on our social media handles at white 54 channel on Twitter, white 54 underscore channel on Instagram, and white 54 on Facebook. Hashtag is YM The Morning. And never, ever, ever forget to tell us where you're watching us from. Uh, so today for Strength of a Woman, first I'd like to talk to every every mom out there or every or every person who's expecting uh, to be a mom if you're going through postpartum depression you're not alone and it's happening across the world pascaline njao the founder of calm mind foundation is here to demystify this karibu san thank you very much thank you very much i appreciate being here uh -huh. thank you so much for the invitation all right your yes. camera is number four right there okay. uh, you can just uh, give a brief uh, bio of yourself as we proceed Mm -hmm. I am Pascal Injao. Mm -hmm. I'm the Just founder. Just look straight into the eyes. Uh, I'm the founder uh -huh. and executive director of Calm Mind Foundation. Mm -hmm. I I'm a legal, I'm a lawyer mm -hmm. by profession, mm -hmm. but I ended up in this field because I have suffered postpartum depression myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I went through that episode, I realized that there's little information regarding mental, maternal mental health. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to create awareness and I wanted mm -hmm. to reach out to more moms so that we can have a more open conversation around motherhood, around parenthood, and so that people and mothers don't feel like they're alone in this journey and they are not the only ones suffering. It's mm -hmm. very important to have this conversation. So that is how I ended up founding Calman Foundation and what we do is that we promote maternal mental health through education, support and advocacy. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started this as an initiative on social media in 2017 and we have grown to becoming an organization now and we have several programs that we are running mm -hmm. um, in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that's what we do. And that's All right, what I do. wonderful. Welcome yes. to Why in the Morning. Welcome to Queen's Wednesday. Thank you very I'd much. like to take you way, 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 way back before mm -hmm. uh, you realized your mom was human like you. Uh, what was the idea you had uh, of your mother that, at that tender age when you think uh, your parents are super <laughs> human? Um, you know, it, it's funny because now I say that I think it becomes very live in the journey of being a mother and nurturing your own children, children mm -hmm. and being, you know, like them looking up to you and how we look at our mothers <laughs> when we are young. Mm -hmm. You know, when they tell you things and they tell you, I know I have been there before, mm -hmm. you do not really quite understand what they mean. Mm -hmm. But now I have learned to appreciate my mother more because mm -hmm. I've realized the challenges that come with motherhood. Mm -hmm. I've understood why sometimes she had to do things the way she did. Mm -hmm. You know, like even disciplining, sometimes it'd be like, I says I met my mother. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, because Does she even love me? Does she <laughs> love me? Does uh -huh. she even love me? Uh -huh. No, and I look at my children, I'm like, you know, one day you'll realize I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I love that right now. Yeah. I love right yeah, now. So. All right, so <laughs> then I'll bring you back. I'll take okay. you back, but no, way, way back mm -hmm. as such. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, when you founded this organization, mm -hmm. uh, what was going on in your life? Um, I, like I said before, I went through postpartum depression with my second child. I mm -hmm. had three babies mm -hmm. and my first one, I was very okay. Mm -hmm. I gave back to my first one. Mm -hmm. I took care of her. She still had several issues here and there. I was a first time mom, mm -hmm. but I got a lot of support mm -hmm. from family, from friends, from everybody. Everyone was checking mm -hmm. and I was okay. Mm -hmm. Coming to my second one, I suffered postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. and. It was hard first to understand why I'm struggling like this because mm -hmm. I'm not a first time mom. Mm -hmm. um, my baby has colic and she has become a cry baby and I'm not sleeping very well at night. But I have done this before. So mm -hmm. why is it different this time? Why mm -hmm. do I look like why do I feel like I'm struggling like this? Mm -hmm. And it is not until like someone came and told me that I might actually be ill. Mm -hmm. that he came to realize that the struggle and how I am feeling at that point mm -hmm. is actually an illness. Mm -hmm. And what I need to do is to actually go and seek help mm -hmm. so that I can feel better. Mm -hmm. So um, I went through very difficult episodes. I had become very emotional. Mm -hmm. I had lost hope. I mm -hmm. felt like my life has, um, like has lost meaning. Mm -hmm. I am not sleeping at night because mm -hmm. most of the times I'll just be there crying. Mm -hmm. uh, the baby is always crying. Um, mm -hmm. It got to a point where I could not even latch the baby properly so mm -hmm. the baby is not getting enough milk to feed on and the baby is also, also having colic. Colic is gas in the stomach uh -huh. and it tends to bother children very much. Uh -huh. So so my baby became such a cry baby uh -huh. which not took a toll on me as well. Mm -hmm. So it became very difficult for me to even take care of this baby. Mm -hmm. 
How was it and bonding with the baby? The bonding was very difficult for me to say. Uh -huh. I, I cannot say that we had a bond at that point uh -huh. because I was suffering myself mm -hmm. and I felt like the reason why I'm suffering like this is this baby. Mm -hmm. Like I wanted a baby, but I didn't see the issues that came with it mm -hmm. because I had not gone through this with my first baby. Uh -huh. So when it happened, it became very hard for me to get myself back together to even get help. And you see the people around you as much as, like I have sisters, I have family, but when you talk to them, mm -hmm. they really do not understand because maternal mental health has not been understood very well. Mm -hmm. Depression in mothers, anxiety in mothers has not been understood very well. Mm -hmm. So sometimes people just don't understand you. So what they look at, look at it as is mm -hmm. as you have changed. So right. to them, you have changed, you've become different. Uh -huh. And it has changed when you got this baby. So since you got a baby, you have changed. But wow. that is just as much as they know. So how to support you, they also do not know. Mm -hmm. So you will suffer, you will have some people probably having uh, checking up on you, but they will mm -hmm. not know the right way to help you. Mm -hmm. So it's always good to seek professional help. It is very important to seek pr uh, professional help. Uh -huh. But you see, until you understand that you are in need of that help, uh -huh. you might not go for that help. Uh -huh. So that's why it's important for us to have this conversation mm -hmm. so that we are telling you, if you feel like this and things have changed after you give birth, mm -hmm. please go see a counselor. Mm -hmm. Let them tell you you're okay or you're not okay. And if you're not okay, mm -hmm. this is what we can do for you. This is how we can help you. Right. So that you don't just stay there thinking that you've just changed and life should just continue and you will get better someday. You can never snap out of a mental illness. You can wow. never snap out of it. So it's uh, listed as a mental illness, postpartum yes. depression. It is. Under the World Health Organization. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes. So I was having this conversation mm. with one of my workmates mm. uh, some time back. Mm. And uh, she was telling me that she went through this. It was very hard for me to believe. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure it's very hard for half this studio mm. to believe that this thing exists. Why do you think it's hard for, for us to believe that there's something like postpartum uh, depression? Um, postpartum depression being a mental illness mm -hmm. is something that only the person who is suffering from it mm -hmm. actually understands that they are not okay. Mm -hmm. Mental illness is not like physical illness. Physical mm -hmm. illness, you'll be able to say, um, I have a wound, I mm -hmm. have something that can be seen. Mm -hmm. Mental illness, if you're suffering, you're mentally mm -hmm. ill, I'll not be able to see. Mm -hmm. And so it has become very difficult for people to believe when you say that you're depressed, mm -hmm. which is also making so many people with mental illness suffer alone mm -hmm. without help. And that's why we also have a lot of issues on uh, people dying by suicide uh -huh. because they're struggling alone. Nobody's believing, believing them. People think that you're looking for attention uh -huh. and so nobody comes you know, to assist you and then you suffer alone and then you end up... Um, all right. You know. Childbirth has always been portrayed as this wonderful time, a blessing mm -hmm. from God and everything. So I guess that is one of the reasons it's very hard for me to believe uh, you mm -hmm. can be depressed after giving birth. Mm -hmm. Do you think we should change this narrative and, and speak the truth we as should. it is? We should. We should. That is where the conversation has to start. Mm -hmm. We need to make women and mothers understand that it's okay to say that motherhood is not easy for you and motherhood it can never be that easy for anybody mm -hmm. because it comes with these challenges. Remember, when you're starting your first baby, you are alone. Mm -hmm. Then this other baby has come. They never come with a manual. You always say that. It sounds like a cliche. <laughs> but you have to figure out how to do it alone. Do they come with a place? <laughs> well, we don't assign you. How could you assign me? All right, all right. Yeah, so, um, so it becomes uh, uh, very difficult for moms to speak out if uh -huh. they, they feel like everybody else is having it easy. Because mm -hmm. when you go to social media, if you ever think about the friends that you know who have babies, on social media, they only bring out the pictures of the beautiful mm -hmm. side of motherhood. Yes. They bring pictures of them holding their children uh -huh. and saying it's such a blessing and it's uh -huh. so awesome and all that. Uh -huh. But they never come back with pictures of yesterday I could not sleep, I feel mm -hmm. like a zombie, I am not thinking right. Mm -hmm. Like motherhood is not easy. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to say motherhood is not easy. I mm -hmm. just by saying that doesn't make you a bad mother. Mm -hmm. It does not mean that you're a bad mother because you've struggled through motherhood and today you just don't feel like you love your, your baby as much, you mm -hmm. know, because there are those times when your baby will just be there and you feel like it's taking a toll on you mm -hmm. and you're like, I am not even sure I was ready for this motherhood thing. Oh, yeah. But the truth is, as long as you get the right support mm -hmm. and you remember to ask for help. Because again, as mothers, you always feel like we need to do everything alone. Uh -huh. Please, it is okay to ask for help. Because mm -hmm. the moment you get that help, 
the more you're able to take care of yourself, you can get that sleep, mm -hmm. which is very important because sleep, sleep, you know, people just talk about, can you get enough sleep? And mm -hmm. you just feel like, you know, you Sleep is very important. It is very important. Mm -hmm. It's one of the reasons why you might end up depressed. Uh -huh. If you don't get enough sleep at night, uh -huh. you might just get depressed. So you have to be very intentional about helping yourself as uh -huh. well. You need to be careful to ask for help. You need to be careful to, you know, uh, be physically be fit. Physically fit. Uh -huh. Physical be fitness is rest. opposed to mental illness. As uh -huh. like a mental health I mean, they are very intertwined. Uh -huh. You need to be stay physically active uh -huh. to also enhance your mental well-being. Mm -hmm. Yes, so it's very important. Stay physically to active well. to enhance your mental well-being. Yes. Uh, what uh, <laughs> our yes. guest of the day right there. Remember, we're on social media and our conversation is post-paternal uh, stress, post-maternal stress. Postpartum stress. Postpartum depression. Postpartum oh. depression. Uh -huh. But the bigger word is maternal mental health. Uh, because, maternal mental health. Yes, because there is anxiety mm -hmm. under it. There is post-traumatic stress disorder. Mm -hmm. You probably had a traumatic birth experience, uh -huh. and it has taken a toll on you because you can. I feel like we need ten interviews for yeah. this. <laughs> <laughs> there are some topics. Yeah. So, what is the umbrella for everything? Maternal mental health. Maternal mental yes. health. Maternal mental health is a topic of conversation. White five four channel on Twitter. White five four underscore channel on Instagram, and White five four on Facebook. If you have a question. Send it our way, and our very able guest right here will be able to answer. All right. So um, another thing, I like to know as mm -hmm. as a as a brother who has sisters who have kids, what 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 can I do to to maybe prevent this or support just in case they're going through this because they might never tell me. Um, what we advocate for mm -hmm. is support. We don't have to wait until they're already in depression mm -hmm. for us to come in and help them. Mm -hmm. The moment a Person, your sister, your brother, uh, sorry, your sister, <laughs> your, your friend. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> it could also be your brother, but because mm -hmm. men also have depression, by the way, they mm -hmm. also get depressed. Uh -huh. Yes, there's also uh, men who go through postpartum oh, depression. That's why you work with moms. pregnant women and new parents. Yes. All right. When yes. you say new parents, it's the dads and the moms. Yes. All right. So yes. men can also go through men this. Men can also go through it. Mm -hmm. It's just that men, because of the society, again, they do not <laughs> accept that they are suffering, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> which is not a good thing, by mm -hmm. the way. It's because very it's important bad thing. to uh -huh. allow yourself to be vulnerable, uh -huh. so to go for help. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't get help again, it will take a toll on you, and you need help mm -hmm. to get better. Mm -hmm. So it's very help important. in cups. Help in cups. <laughs> very very important. Very very. So as a brother, as a friend, what you need to do is be there to support that person automatically. Uh, when a mother gets a baby, mm -hmm. they need help. If you're a friend, you need to go there and visit. Don't go there and expect her to be the one who's serving you. Be there to wash the dishes, be there to clean the house, be there to hold the baby, let them have a one hour nap. Uh -huh. Like just be there to help. I'm a sister, I have a sister who's delivered. I need to be there to offer support and help. Check on them. Let them, like you need to be present because remember someone who's going through a mental illness, you're just coming randomly after six months and asking how they're doing will not like be a safe space for them to accept that they're suffering mm -hmm. and be it ready to give that, that conversation that they are actually uh, suffering. Mm -hmm. But if you've been present continuously, then they will tell you, hey, today I really struggled. This is what happened. And when a mom now feels like, you know, there's a time when a mom will even come and tell you, I am not sure I even love this baby. I just feel like I just want to either abandon them mm -hmm. or I just feel like I have had uh, thoughts of even harming my baby. So then you're able to know that this person, uh, we, we, mm -hmm. dealing with moms, you have heard all these stories, mm -hmm. people coming to us because they're either getting help for themselves or help for their, for their uh, friends or people they know. And these are the kind of stories that come up. And until you have that honest conversation with that person, they will not be open enough to tell you how they truly are doing. Mm -hmm. But the moment you're present, then they are able to tell you and then you can get them help mm -hmm. or you can, you know, tell them to seek help uh -huh. and then they can start uh, their journey to recovery. Wonderful right mm -hmm. there. Uh, mm -hmm. I have a theory. Mm -hmm. Are you ready to listen? <laughs> I am ready to listen. <laughs> so either you'll tell me if I'm correct or not. Yes. Alright, so uh, people claim depression and mental illness is not an African thing. Mm -hmm. Alright, so uh, I'm guessing uh, back in the day we used to have a society that was set up in a different way. Then post-colonization we started living like the westernized guys. Uh, so uh, we can't say we don't have the same problems as them when we leave as them. Yes. Uh, is my tr uh, theory correct? Not. <laughs> it's not correct. <laughs> All right. It's not Bring correct. me up to speed. It is uh -huh. not correct. And let me tell you, mental illness, by the way, it is very widely known. I know mm -hmm. that theory. People believe that mental illness is a Western kind mm -hmm. of an illness. So anytime you say you're depressed, but like, what's wrong with you? Why have you started? But that is not correct because uh -huh. remember, it's an illness like any other illness. And mm -hmm. it does not choose who it is going to affect mm -hmm. anybody 
somebody can be can get mentally ill uh -huh. and the, the, the reason why there's also another one that goes that people keep on asking why did our mothers not go through these issues uh -huh. then D they also got in fact very many key children mm -hmm. you you're probably suffering with one mm -hmm. they probably got <laughs> nine you know mm -hmm. and you you know the question comes of how comes they never suffered but remember like you said uh -huh. initially children when a child is born they used to be a community you know like the whole community used to come around you and support you mm -hmm. a child used to belong to the community including the disciplining you uh -huh. know yes it, yes it, yes it, it, <laughs> i never love that part though <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand <laughs> how my uncle can spank me. Oh, yes. uh -huh. It's because children were taken as a community, mm -hmm. as in, like they belong to the community. Mm -hmm. So whenever a mother would, you know, deliver, everybody, or the neighbors are there with, um, you know, jugs of uji, uh -huh. they're there with soup, they're there to hold the baby for you, they're uh -huh. there to support you. Mm -hmm. Nowadays things have changed. Mm -hmm. People really, like, probably don't even know your neighbor. Like, mm -hmm. you're in an apartment together, you don't even know your neighbor. Mm -hmm. You just normally meet on uh, the lift or stairs, and you just say hi, and that's it. Mm -hmm. You do not know each other. So even when you deliver, they're not going to come and support you. Mm -hmm. And so even if you're lucky to have a partner, he's probably working yes. 90 hours a week. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, it's also very important for us to also, like, uh, forget about the African way of doing things the way you know men are told that there are things their roles that are supposed to be for women so when a child comes there you cannot even hold the diaper you cannot change the diaper you cannot give milk because mm -hmm. the mother is there that's are supposed to do it mm -hmm. nah uh -huh. we are you know it's 2020 surely mm -hmm. things have changed things have and changed as sure. long as you support your wife mm -hmm. then you can expect your marriage to be okay mm -hmm. but if you do not support your wife and she ends up depressed remember it will also affect your marriage so by helping her you know just helping her just because in like the moment you help her you're helping her to be okay you're mm -hmm. helping your marriage to work mm -hmm. you're helping her to be able to bond well with the baby as well and you're securing so the future of the baby as yes, well yes you are mm -hmm. yes you are uh, one last question uh, before we talk about carmine mm -hmm. as an organization i'd like to know how does uh, post maternal depression mm -hmm. impact on the on the baby at a later stage in life if uh, it's not uh, well taken care of um, you see, when a mother is suffering, mm -hmm. one, they will not be able to do the basic things that you're supposed to do for your child. Mm -hmm. There's normally the vaccinations that the child is supposed to be taken for. Mm -hmm. If this mom is even fearing leaving the house, so chances are that they won't even take the child for vaccination. Mm -hmm. Then this child will not be able to bond with the mother as they should. Mm -hmm. There's going to be the issue of breastfeeding because when you're not okay mentally, then you also have problems having enough milk. Mm -hmm. So the baby is supposed to benefit from your milk, but you're not able to produce enough. So the mm -hmm. baby again suffers because they're not able to benefit from your milk. So the issue now arises because there's no bond with the child the child is not being able to feed from mm -hmm. the milk so health wise they don't end up developing the way physically they suppose, physically they're uh -huh. affected mentally they're affected uh -huh. because remember the child is very dependent on the mom mm -hmm. when the mom is well and they have a good bond with the child mm -hmm. then they, 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 there's a sense of security there's a sense of belonging mm -hmm. you know because they have a special <coughs> attachment with the mother mm -hmm. but the moment that is lacking the mm -hmm. child also gets affected mentally and that's why we normally say mental illness can be interge intergenerational uh -huh. it goes down generations mm -hmm. if you're depressed and you do not get help, it uh -huh. could pass down to your children. It could pass, and their children, if they don't get help in time and they don't recover, then of course it passes on to their children. Mm -hmm. So it becomes a generational issue. Mm -hmm. So you helping yourself, you've not only helped yourself, you've helped your children, you've also helped the baby to be okay so mm -hmm. that it does not fall down into their children, their children's children. So right. it's very, very important. I have a, I have a neighbor with a baby, mm -hmm. or with a, with a, with a child, mm -hmm. not so... Well, I don't know how to estimate the ages, but okay. about this, <laughs> <laughs> this height right here. Uh -huh. uh, his name is Ro Rodney. Okay. Ask me how I know his name. Because uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> his mom, uh, in the apartment block, the mom always calls Rodney at volume 30. Rodney's mm. always, Rodney! <laughs> Rodney this, and Rodney gets spanked. Rodney and a chapo left, right, and center. Is this uh, a symptom mm -hmm. of s such a case? Um, it's not all those cases um, that are mental, as in like they're related to a mental illness, mm -hmm. <laughs> because maybe Rodney, the mom is not able to hold her calm when mm -hmm. Rodney is <laughs> all over, because boys can also be all over. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, so okay. sometimes she loses her cool uh -huh. and she doesn't have to be truly mentally ill uh -huh. um, for her to react like that. Sometimes though, if you realize that it's now going beyond just 
Kumke, you know, you definitely want to just confirm whether mm -hmm. there's beyond because it is also doing damage if they're not connecting with that child. Uh -huh. Every other time it's her being violent on the child, uh -huh. if it's her always being, you know, on the child's case and all that, uh -huh. because then, of course, that also affects the child. Mm -hmm. So that needs to be, but it's not always, some people are just not good people. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's not oh. always that, uh, yeah, that, right. that someone is mentally ill for uh -huh. them to do something. Um, because also remember, there are women who kill their own children. Uh -huh. We call it infanticide if you kill your child before one year post childbirth. Uh -huh. Because that is a, a, the period within which you are taken to be very prone to a mental illness. Yeah, so, if, so when you go to court, you're t you're, 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 it becomes a lesser sentence. It's called infanticide. Uh -huh. So you're going to be charged with a let lesser sentence. Uh -huh. But because you're taken that you are not in your right state, you're not completely recovered. Mm -hmm. So you might do that as a result of what you're going through, your emotions, Insanity. your hormones, mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. So you might end up killing your child. Mm -hmm. However, there is the cases of infanticide, which are truly the mother is not okay. Mm. There are also other cases where mm. it's just people who are not good people. And, and some, some people are just loud. Yes, <laughs> there are some people who are just loud also. Yes. All right. So you want to confirm whether it's a case of a mental illness or mm. not. All right, come mm. on. Mm. Uh, the organization, uh, what is your physical location? Well, uh, we are located in Westlands, uh -huh. uh, Nairobi. That's mm -hmm. where our physical location is. Mm -hmm. We also have a website. If you want to know and understand mm -hmm. more of what we do, you mm -hmm. can go to our website. It's mm -hmm. calmindfoundation.org. Just tell them, look them straight into the eyes when <laughs> you tell them have, things oh, like yes, that. Yes, we Gems. have a website. Mm -hmm. And it's calmindfoundation.org. Mm -hmm. You can see more about us, what we do, what we are involved in doing. We are happy to get more people on board mm -hmm. if you want to be part of what we are doing. It's always good to do things as a community because mm -hmm. it affects each one of us. Mm -hmm. um, the more, since we started we started it as my initiative because of what i had gone through mm -hmm. right now we have a whatsapp support group with 150 moms mm -hmm. and we support each other we offer support we also do noble things like mm -hmm. some of the projects that we have done they have come in and supported some of the projects that we are doing in some of the places um, mm -hmm. around nairobi and so Doing this, you cannot do it alone. But mm -hmm. when you come together as a community mm -hmm. and as people who have a heart and a passion for seeing mothers get better and take care of their children, become a happy community, mm -hmm. then it is good to always you know, be involved in such activities. So um, uh, what we do is that we have projects mm -hmm. that we run, which is the WhatsApp support group. We mm -hmm. are active on WhatsApp support group because mm -hmm. we believe when you come together, we're able to support each other, peer, what we call peer-to-peer -peer support. Mm -hmm. We're able to support each other. And if a mother is going through a difficult time, we have counselors who mm -hmm. are in the group as well, and they're able to support them mm -hmm. and offer them counseling services. And then we also have events. Mm -hmm. So the events are more on education. We are big on education because we believe the moment we have more education and people understand that mental illness is not a western mm. <laughs> <laughs> issue yeah. the, the better and it also helps with the stigma you know eradicating the stigma mm -hmm. and, and and discrimination because mm -hmm. that is why mothers are not able to access help and mm -hmm. go for help because they are it's there's still stigma that surrounds mental illness mm -hmm. um then we also so we do a lot of events on education or, uh, mm -hmm. to educate the society to educate mothers we also have support group sessions we have like one that we started in kawangware so mm -hmm. we have one for pregnant moms and another one for new moms. Mm -hmm. um, we want to bring dads on board. It has mm -hmm. not been easy. Please though. bring dads on board. <laughs> Please bring dads it on board. It has not been very easy uh -huh. because it's hard to, like dads are very difficult to just come and accept that oh, I need yeah. help. I need and and the extra time is spent <laughs> watching football <laughs> I know, and sharing beers. Yeah. The moment they realize that mental mm -hmm. illness and getting help for mental illness is just as important as mm -hmm. getting help for physical illness. Uh -huh. We will help ourselves so much. Like, mm -hmm. we won't have all this. We are going to, uh, like, be able to reduce the number of people who are dying by suicide because mm -hmm. that is where it starts. If mm -hmm. you don't get help, you're going to go watch your football, mm -hmm. you're still not okay. You mm -hmm. go back home, you're mm -hmm. still ill. Wake up and with then the same it problems. takes a toll on you, and before you know it, you mm -hmm. are at that edge. You cannot help yourself anymore. So it's very, very important for the men to also come on board. We are also actively involved with the Mental Health Amendment Bill. Mm -hmm. It's a bill that is in Parliament. Mm -hmm. It went through the Senate. It's currently um, in National Assembly. Mm -hmm. So we are providing this because we, the Mental Health Act that we have Who drafted this bill? It's uh, sponsored by Senator Sylvia Kasanga. Oh, shout out to Senator yes, Sylvia yes, Kasanga yes. right there. Yes, uh -huh. she has truly helped us because the act that we are currently have is a 1991 wow. <laughs> yes, law. So, I mean, so much has happened. We have a new constitution. We have so many things that have, that have changed. Mm -hmm. So it's very, it was very important for us to have another law mm -hmm. 
that reflects the issues that we have right now. And mm -hmm. it is a very good uh, law, so we are very actively involved in trying to push for it to pass because mm -hmm. the moment we have a good law, then it means that we can also access good services. Mm -hmm. We can hold people accountable to mm -hmm. offer us good mental health services. Mm -hmm. Because mental health has not just been forgotten in the conversations, but even in prioritization, in mm -hmm. health agenda, mm -hmm. mental health has been given, you know, like it has the been forgotten. Priority. Yes, uh -huh. it is only now that I realize that even the president recently spoke about mental health when the, he was for, um, calling for uh, the task force to be formed. Mm -hmm. And it's because the, it, it, it has become very obvious mm -hmm. that there is an issue. Mm -hmm. The cases of people suicide. committing suicide are very high. People killing each other. Killing, people killing each other in relationships. Exactly. So p I think it has become very obvious and mm -hmm. I'm happy that finally someone has realized that it's time we do something about it. Mm -hmm. And so things are now happening. So we are very actively involved in policy work as well mm -hmm. because we believe good policies if implemented, mm -hmm. then it means that better services are going to be available for the people. How can we yes. support Senator Kasang first in um, pushing this bill? Senator Kasanga, you can reach her. You uh -huh. can reach her. She's very available mm -hmm. for anyone who wants to contact her, mm -hmm. who wants to reach out to her and mm -hmm. support her with the bill and even have these conversations. Because you see, when we come together and have a, a voice mm -hmm. in the bill, we are going to have a good bill that encompasses all areas of mental health. Mm -hmm. So it's very important for us to have our eyes and our voices in mm -hmm. that bill and mm -hmm. in laws. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she's very available. You can mm -hmm. reach her. Mm -hmm. um, there's always a way. She's on social media. She's mm -hmm. on Facebook as mm -hmm. Senator Sylvia Kasanga. Mm -hmm. You can just have a conversation there and start a conversation there. You can email her. So she's very open to having a conversation and reaching out. Another big shout out to Sadie Turkis Anger. If you know yes. I tell her, we give her a shout out as Y254 for what she's mm -hmm. doing uh, for mental uh, health. Mm -hmm. uh, so Calm Mind, the vision for Calm Mind. The vision for Calm Mind. Because you're more or less told us the mission and what you're doing. Uh, so what is the vision with it? Our vision is to eradicate stigma and discrimination on mental health. Eradicate. Yes, because the mm -hmm. moment we eradicate the stigma, then it means that someone will go for services. Mm -hmm. It means that services will be prioritized. Mm -hmm. It means that people are going to understand. By the time we are done with the stigma, the same way we did with HIV. Remember when there was a lot of stigma around mm -hmm. HIV? Mm -hmm. There was, people would not go even to get tested mm -hmm. because you are afraid when I get people would myself not share positive. a room with positive people. Yes, mm -hmm. you see, now things have changed mm -hmm. because the voices were so loud and people understood that it is not a death sentence. Mm -hmm. So in the same case, we need to have our voices out there for us to eradicate that stigma that surrounds mental health mm -hmm. so that people are able to go for those services and mm -hmm. understand that it is okay to accept you're not okay mm -hmm. and you need help. All right. Yes. Another thing that people are always scared of when it comes to accepting mm -hmm. uh, they're mentally ill is uh, uh, later on, it affects your life. Say uh, you have it on record, uh, you, uh, you've been mentally ill before mm -hmm. and you're applying for a job maybe. Uh, you, chances are you're going to get judged. If you're going to be saying applying to teach Sunday school in church, you have a history of uh, mental illness, people are going to judge you. How can we deal with this? You see, we are talking about discrimination mm -hmm. because that is discrimination. Like it has become, it is, it is the way things are. I mm -hmm. agree with you. That is how things are. The moment you come out and say that I am, I have been suffering, you know, with anxiety, depression, whatever it is, mm -hmm. then you of course get discriminated. Nobody, people will not tell you we are not giving this, giving you this job because <laughs> of such and such, uh -huh. uh, you know, confession. But that's the truth. It's mm -hmm. the, it's, it's, it's a truth, and it's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. It's very, very unfortunate. Unfortunately, the only way we are going to get to a place where you are not discriminated by mm -hmm. virtue of um, having a mental illness mm -hmm. is we have this voice keep keep talking, talking about it keep on talking so that people realize mm -hmm. that because I'm depressed doesn't mean that I cannot work mm -hmm. there are people who are depressed and they are all over us and there are people who are making it big mm -hmm. and they have had their own challenges with mm -hmm. mental illness mm -hmm. so having a mental illness doesn't make you that it doesn't equal to disability that mm -hmm. you're not able to do anything mm -hmm. and so if you give you this job you're not going to be able to deliver it's just a no. chip on yeah they only need to go for help they need to go and probably if it's counseling if it's medication and they're okay and they're able to work as anybody else so it does not equal to not being able to deliver. I couldn't have no. said it better. No. And thank you very much for that. And thank you very much for what you're doing. Uh, one last thing. Mm. Uh, this is Queen's Wednesday. This mm. is Strength of a Woman. Uh, but I always love to represent for the boy child. Yes, yes. very <laughs> so, important. <laughs> very important. So uh, there's that boy child out there who's, uh, who's probably about to have a baby mm. and is uh, ran away from the woman. Uh, is 
there's a boy child out there who has a baby who's never contacted the mother of the child for a very long time. What would you tell this person? What is the importance of a child having a father figure in their life? If you are out there mm -hmm. and you know you have a baby out there, mm -hmm. it is very, very important mm -hmm. for you to be present in the lives of mm -hmm. your child. Mm -hmm. Because it is, it is, we have single mothers who have made it and they've mm -hmm. brought up very good children and mm -hmm. they are well and they are okay. Mm -hmm. But there's always that support system also comes with having a father figure in their lives. Mm -hmm. And I love that things have changed. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, even when you father a child and mm -hmm. you don't end up with the mother of the child, mm -hmm. I see so many people are co-parenting. It has become very acceptable nowadays. Mm -hmm. We hear so many mothers and fathers who are co-parenting their child. Mm -hmm. So they probably even remarried, but the child, the father of the child is always present in the lives of their biological children. Mm -hmm. It is very, very important for that child to grow up knowing mm -hmm. this is my biological father it's mm -hmm. okay they probably have another father mm -hmm. but it's very it, it, it helps them to f not feel like they were you know a, a child sometimes gets to a point where as a single mother and they realize that their father just walked out of their lives mm -hmm. and, and start their them friends so have fathers they, yes yeah. their child, they are, yeah, so at school when they're talking about my father this my father that you do not have someone to talk about in terms of a father in mm -hmm. their lives so it helps the child to just have a sense of belonging and also feel wanted because mm -hmm. if you run away from their lives they start asking themselves is it that I, I did not look like I was good enough mm -hmm. for him to want to be in my life and then it is so unfortunate that some of those fathers will not be present in the ch lives of their children until when they are 18 mm -hmm. and when they are probably <laughs> marrying or getting married. The number one in case. Yes. Yes. <laughs> the mother struggled. She did right. everything alone. Mm -hmm. And then when the child is now an adult, mm -hmm. now you want to be present. Complicates it everything. It complicates everything. And uh -huh. it's not for even for the child. Uh -huh. So as much as some of them work, some relationships, some children are able to forgive their fathers and all that. But it's very, very important. If you are out there and you know you have fathered a child, it does not mean that because you're in the life of the, your child, you must be in the life of the mother. If things are not working between you and the mother of the child, it is fine. But please make sure that you are, the li you are in the life of your child. Your Thank you presence. very much for coming through to Wine in the Morning. Thank One last thing, give, uh, remind them the website and uh, the social media and the helpline if you have one. Yes, we mm -hmm. are. you can find us on our website. You can... Um, access us on our website. Our website is calmindfoundation.org. We have uh, social media platforms. On Facebook, we are Calmind Foundation. On uh, Twitter, we are at calmindf. And on Instagram, we are at calmindf. We are happy to interact with you. Should you need help, if you're a mom out there and you need and you've been wondering where you can get help, please reach out to us. We are very open to walk this motherhood journey with you and to support you. Thank you. All right, wonderful. I can't <laughs> add on to that. Uh, remember, this is strength of a woman. And if you think there's an amazing woman like this one who's doing amazing stuff out there that needs to be on the spotlight, uh, send uh, the information our way on our social media handles. They're always right there below the screen. My name is Barry Moses. This is Strength of a Woman on Wine in the Morning on Queen's Wednesday. Kalami Val is coming up next with another uh, fire topic. You don't want to miss it.